Okay. Grandia 3, no heals, part... 5? I think? Maybe. I can't believe I'm getting trolled like this. It's okay, everything's fine. Alright, so we are at the part of the story which I completely forgot about until last time. Which is going off hunting for another lime fruit with Ulf. Still no armor on uh, Yuki here because yeah. Do you can spell the skills? Lizard Hunter is going to be useful against the Fishman guys. Um, we would ideally have Beast Hunter, but I don't think we actually have that accessible to us right now. I guess I could equip other things instead, since the Fishmen are not actually part of the boss this time around. It's two Minotaurs instead of a Minotaur and a crap load of Fishmen. There we go. But let's go meet off. Alright, that was awesome. And now we know Ulf. Thirty-seven defense, so about on par. Really good boots for movement. None of the accessories we could equip him with are at all relevant for this boss. I guess probably Alfina has an initiative boosting ring that she has equipped that we could have removed beforehand. But obviously I forgot about that. Sure, he's not going to use either of these. Oh. 
Thanks, Shiva. I don't think we need anything, but let's make a really quick jog. And I mean really quick. Nope, 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 nope. Shit, this guy sells beast hunter. decide if I want to use Beast Hunter if he can't even have it boosted by tech at all. Fighter book boosts mind as well, that's kind of interesting. That's fun to be stalking for the moment. I'm pretty sure you can actually return to Mendy after you go to Randodo before getting to Lemfruit. Thanks, Alf. These are really lovely cutscenes that I am ruthlessly skipping. forgot so completely about this part of the story existing that for a little while I thought this room was completely optional. Like it was just a place you could backtrack to Randodo if you wanted to, but you wouldn't find anything of interest there. It would just be a secret room. Nope, this is part of the story.
I kinda don't think Whirlwind is fast enough to catch up with us, unfortunately. It's not in range anyway. Yeah, I'll do a lot of damage. All right, we did it. With that in mind, I could have Yuki. Could have Alf be using the book that Yuki is using. Just too slow. All right, we did it. Should have had all the attack one that was further. I thought he managed to dodge it, oh well.
about time. Cool, more. Finally! Hey, were they even trying? I wish we could get a restock on Boom Shrooms. They're so quick to use. I mean, I know Yuki has quick draw equipped as well. But still. in quicker. That's okay, he dodges it anyway. Nice. Sounds good to me. Worth noting whether or not that counted as effective elements. Also, maybe fishermen are weak to wind anyway. Special level up! I'm kinda concerned about going up here without healing, but whatever.
I was doing testing recently against enemies, and it seemed that Snooze was stacking against them, so it's probably able to stack against players as well. Oh my god. Someone's dying. Never mind. He's fine, he'll make it. Should have targeted B. Knock it back farther along the IP gaze. Clutch. Man, I'm ready to drop. Let's go get something to eat. That is pretty much the best possible use for Force Wave. There is actually a really late game skill called Decoy, which makes enemies more likely to target you, even if uh, other allies are alive. So you could probably make use of that for uh, with Ulf. Obviously, it's also good with Alfina and her protective Holy Sphere. For this one, I'm recovering now. We got pretty far, but I don't think Elf with 30 HP is going to do too good on his own. Also, this is just a neat structure here. I can't believe I missed this chest. And it's armor. No, thank you. I'll sell it for a little gold. Until Elf learns Rockbreaker, he can't really effectively counter this Fishman guy here. Which means Yuki is in the same situation as before.
Oh, but he dodged it anyway. There's gonna be trouble if he falls asleep here, though. Thumbs up. Let's see if all things do longer, but never mind. Anyway, most likely would have slept longer. No luck, too bad. We can increase our odds with Flash, but I haven't really been using it. Not that I don't want to, I just haven't thought of it, honestly. Been more prioritized with other ways of avoiding damage. Oops. I got it. Thanks all. No. Faster combos, criticals would have worked. Look if we had that skill equipped attack speed, I guess. I think we would have moved to act quicker. But maybe that's not what that skill does, I haven't used it much. All normal attacks. Like, hopefully that'll work? I think this fish man will get stuck on it. Well, the game suggests that hitting E will work, so let's try that. But pay attention to if D starts getting its special move highlight.
piada. But because of that, we all are D. But we also knocked D into the cancel zone, which is nice. Or actually, like, all the way into the back behind the start of the IP gauge. That's kind of interesting. I got it. Sir. <laughs> no one can stop okay, now. apparently learning a new special move takes priority over using a <laughs> what a rush. An aerial combo. I kind of saw that coming. I was really hoping. But again, that delay between common acts when you're using a critical is crucial. What's the damage ratio here? See, Snooze inflicted. Snooze landed on Yuki, which put him to sleep. But that also counts as a hit for purposes of countering. So if anything hits you or inflicts a stats effect on you while you're in the animation state of ending an attack, like if you just win an attack but you haven't yet returned to the idle locking around state, um. It inflicts a counterattack. So that's why Yuki's damage ratio got boosted to 30%, even though he didn't take any damage. Um, this actually has potential uses if you use it on your. Like, if you use it for your advantage, trying to inflict statuses with craze or snooze. Because both of those uh, have the same impact on enemies. Um, if you have Jolt Counter, the damage ratio from your counter attack, which is actually a counter spell infliction, uh, effect infliction, that will um, have the boosted counter, boosted damage ratio from Jolt Counter as well. So you can get up to 200% damage ratio for no damage just by inflicting a status effect if you have really good timing. We did it! I think that's all of them. Ooh, the scout book. Honestly, I'm actually going to go back to Mendy with this. Berserker is awesome, and I would love to have it as soon as possible. And that's going to be going on to Yugi since he has the much higher skill level. What will it replace? It can replace Warrior's Way, obviously. Mighty Blow we don't need. Counter and Quick Draw are also sacrificable. But I honestly might drop Counter and Perception. For the bosses, they don't normal attack that often. Though they kind of do. Mm, they do often enough. The deal is, they don't a lot, but Perception is... Actually, no, that's right. We are still going to only have Perception boosted to level 2 here. Um, because we're not equipping the scout book, we're extracting Berserker from it. Oh. 
Another potential use is to just equip it onto Yuki for now. And uh, um, skip out Warrior's Way and Mighty Blow, which don't matter a ton. And give him boosted tech and all his other skills. Which improves his perception, which is great for normal enemy encounters. Mm, let's do that for now. It would be really awesome to have Jolt Counter. I think it might be extractable from the book that Yuki's currently using. Which might be more valuable in Berserker for now. On the other hand, for the moment, that means we can put that skill book onto Ulf. It's actually a detriment because um, he doesn't have any tech books equipped, but he could have Beast Hunter. Always too late. Anyway, we do actually have more grinding options available. Well, kind of. Beast Hunter for the boss, but there aren't actually any beasts we're fighting in the normal enemies. And I think I'm going to run back down to the boat. Partially just to get some more fighting time in for all if he could use some better uh, skill levels, uh, expert levels. And it always helps to grind Yuki too, obviously. But also, there is a pair of boots that are going to be sitting down there eventually? I'm not sure if they are yet. Probably not till later, but it can't hurt to look. They aren't going to be wearable by anyone but Alfina for now, though, since they're slippers. Glass slippers, I believe. But they're a really good pair of boots. If we get them now, then we can just put them on Alfina when we get her back. I'm actually going to use Reception Encounter since they're kind of more useful than Lizard Hunter right now. But I could get rid of that. Alright, let's do that for now. Quick Draw is really handy. I like items, so let's make use of them. Level 1314 is probably fine, even with basic ulf stats. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to level them up some more. I mean, they're expert levels, mostly. I think there's a hunter for avians, a hunter skill. Definitely not yet accessible though. Oh well, I tried.
Not my problem. <laughs> I didn't even break a sweat. I guess we all needed a little backtracking here. I'm kind of surprised that the game just warps you to the start after the fight with the excise guys instead of popping you out closer to the top of the mountain. I mean, it's handy for sure. But it means that the backtracking part there really is optional. And the game doesn't do anything to suggest you go this way. I somehow miss a chest. Sure, I'll take it. He's actually cutting off the one that's going for all. I wonder if Ulf can intercept it? I kinda doubt it, but let's try. Nah, really, really close, but not quite. Works for me. Take this. right nearby. Alright! We did it! Oh. 
If mana eggs really do boost your special moves that match the element, then, well, there's not going to be any harm equipping a fire two egg on Ulf. Test that actually. Around 450 damage. Rip Yuki. Nice. Hold on, we gotta talk this guy for a while. Did the screen flash purple there? is not that different from 449.
The first hit throws him into the air. The next two are aerial. So that's 13% damage ratio. Did the screen just sideways there? It kind of felt like it swung away from all its impact. Which would be a really cool effect. Hey, were they even trying? Yeah, I'll find me we're gonna get there too early. I'm not sure what your plan of attack really was there. I must have misread what they suggested. Probably it was a special move or something. Skill level up, yes. Also saw that coming. This might sting a little. That's fine now. Clean survival. Oh, hopefully he doesn't die. No, not like this. Oh well. Do 
man. Man, I'm really <laughs> He's glowing sword in his corpse. Free rubber boots. I believe there's a recover sphere downstairs, and we were headed that way anyway, so let's check it out. Also, yes, Yuki is ostensibly alive here. No, he's not actually. I don't even really know why you can't have other party members on the lead in the overworld. Like, they clearly have run cycles animated. For battle purposes. But I guess it's probably a different animation, slightly. Than when they're carrying around their sword. Weapon. Should be a recover sphere, yeah. But they're not for the guys. Too bad. Hold on. The earliest you can get them is when the ladies disappeared. Is this a metaphor? Respawn. Also, it's kind of cool that the area you navigate to upstairs is the same one that you can see from the start. If you're paying really close attention, you can see the lizard guy up there and the chest, possibly as you're coming up on this area. So the chest would be mostly obscured. Anyway, if the map weren't there, that would be one way to get a lay of the land before you actually make it. Cough, cough, and be a one. Can a PSPRP this, please? Hey, were they even trying?
It'll kill it though. Zoe also throw you into the air and deal 5% damage ratio each hit. Pass the first. By the looks of it. Nice so dodgy. You were saying, sir. I guess I did. I got it. Thanks, Alf. Yeah, pretty close. Yuki's jumps were uh, life changing as a kid. That's how I jump forever. Unfortunately, including the sound effects.
Too bad. Lol. Come to think of it. If you're really good at this game and have the formations memorized, which is crazy, but if you do, the order that they get marked on the IP gauge indicates the, you know, the position of which enemy is where on the IP gauge, predictably. So, like, in this battle, Fishman Captain is Ollie's A. This guy is B, and this one is C. If we fly and return to this fight, I'm sure these guys would be in the same place. On the actual, like, battle arena. Now, consequently, um, when we see their positions get marked on the IP gauge, they get, they show up at the start of battle, A, B, C. So like A will get dropped in its place first, and then B will get dropped in its place second, and then C last. And we can... I mean, that's also just visible by looking, obviously, at where A, B, and C are right now. So you can tie them right to their position on the IP gauge. But you also don't need to... Um... Read their letters to know which ones are which if you're paying attention to what order they show up in. This might sting a little. They'll never catch us now. So let's pay attention here and see what happens. Yeah, see? A, B, C. Damn! We can't get away! Ha! Kiss my tail! Ha! Kiss my tail! Is A always in the lead? That's what I want to know. It's always fine in that order. They'll never catch us now. Could be some RNG value not being teched. Or it could be reliable, which would be cooler. Ha! Kiss my tail! Order is ACP for these guys. Let's see what's up with the next. Tail. 
It's consistent here. They'll never catch us now. Yeah, huh? Ha! Kiss my tail. They'll never catch us now. Yeah, it seems predictable. Unless the battle arrangement has specific information about who's going first in the encoded into the actual battle, the same way that the enemy list is. So we need to see if that order is consistent for all formations with three enemies. Or just this one. Ha! Kiss my tail! I don't think there are enough enemies left in this general region to test that. consistent for these guys. Is D always in the center? They'll never catch us now. Uh-huh, interesting. Very interesting. What I'm gathering is that the player order is randomized, but... Enemy formation is consistent. Ha! Kiss my tail. I thought it might have to do with the enemy's own initiative values, but these are different enemies in different slots. Uh, or different enemies in the same, in the, in a given A, B, C, D slot. So it looks to be determined just based on their position within the list of enemies for the battle. That's pretty cool. a bit in the past, too. Like, I believe those aren't really randomized. The player position is not randomized, but their progress along the IP gauge is the order that they appear in on the IP gauge, I mean. That might have to do with initiative, but I don't think it does.
stop me now. And again, there are three layouts that enemies can spawn in for a given number of enemies. I didn't even break a sweat. The first layout is where you just meet them with normal, no special initiative. If you are dizzy when they run into you, actually no, if you're dizzy when they run into you, you're screwed. <laughs> but if you're dizzy or just approach from the side, then the enemy will make a surrounding you pattern. And if you run into them while they're dizzy, um, then you will... What you call it? Oh. Uh, you'll get a sort of circular pattern around them. And the specific positions of enemies within those formations depends on their placement in the battle list. A, B, C, D, etc. As well as... Well, actually, no, that's the only thing they depend on. For your players, uh, position is random. Or, I mean, the position is never random. It's always consistent. I think. Just dependent on 1, 2, 3, 4. P.S. Horse Wave is a force to be reckoned with. Alright! We did it! I'm not sure what Yugi's next special move is, honestly. It could be some R M, but I don't think so. Anyway, I doubt he's learning it at this special level. There's a meta egg sitting in the distance, what the hell? Does that respawn, or did I just manage to miss it the first time through? I could have missed it, it's a little out of the way.
boosted Yuki's damage ratio by 30% even though he wasn't hit? Interesting? Do these moves boost the damage ratio even if they don't actually land? That would be kind of advantageous for your party. Hey, were they even trying? Yeah, that battle formation seems really consistent. Actually managed to tire Yuki out. When you're going through here the first time and the earthquakes are really bad. You know, I wanted to check their damage ratio. Though, since they weren't in the recovering from attacking, they wouldn't have been hit by that 30% counter anyway. I wonder why that works. I mean, it certainly counts as an aerial impact attack, an impact attack, uh, because we don't see the 3 or 5% from you know, normal impact attacks. But we do get that counter. Apparently, even if it doesn't... Um, actually inflict the effect, potentially. I 
love the view you get from up here. You can also get a little impression of who they're attacking just by looking at who they're facing towards. Hey, were they even trying? Combined with knowledge of battle formations and what that corresponds to in terms of place on the IP gauge, you could make a full assessment of the battle before... <laughs> I mean... Barely within the first couple seconds. But <laughs> that would take some practice. I'm not sure what Yuki said there, but it's not a line I'm familiar with. Anyway, yeah, check out this awesome view. Actually, I guess you could get lost on the lower path, if you're not paying too much attention. But if you're thinking, how am I going to get back up, then you'll kind of be rewarded for finding the ladder. I feel like... I feel like this is a game that could have had some advantage from not having a mini-map at all. I mean, I understand why. And it is a full 3D game, so having a map to help you get around would be kind of handy. But I feel like navigation has always been harder in Grandia 1 than Grandia 3. Just due to the nature of the layout in Grandia 1, not just because Grandia 1 doesn't have a mini-map, Admittedly, there are totally times when the actual world layout kind of subverts the minimap layout. And that's pretty cool to see in Grandia 3. You wouldn't be able to subvert a thing that you've grown to depend on. You can't suffer to think that you've grown to depend on if you never, uh, grow to depend on it in the first place. And if you have figured out how to navigate without using the mini-map so much, then you'll be rewarded later for being able to get through the areas with more confusing maps without, uh, without using the mini-map as much because you aren't depending on it. So! Works out both ways. 
Anyway, I'm pausing the recording here because supper's ready, but I will be back to uh, fight this boss soon and the recordings will be merged. <laughs> Okay, back for a uh, part two of part probably five, still not sure. Let's see if we can kill those minotaurs, but check our setup first. Menuing safe spheres is like the hardest thing in this game. Way harder than anything else. Melt Crystal got nothing on safe sphere menuing. Okay, let's try it. Uh, actually, I don't think there's anything down here, but let's check it out. Now, this is actually the only optional room in this game, besides in towns. The underground caverns. Which also means that this room completely fascinated me when I was like seven or eight. But yeah, there's seriously nothing down here. Anyway, onto Minotaurs. This area falling down is actually pretty cool. Oh no, the Minotaur is back. This is so sad. Oh well, we can deal with it. Um, awkward. I'm pretty sure I can skip this cutscene, but, uh, not worth it. Too priceless. Yeah, so this fight's cool. I don't remember it at all. Either I'm gonna get wrecked or it's gonna be okay.
nice. He actually knocked them far enough away. However, slight difficulty. So, like, I can cancel this one. But. This guy's using Ground Crush. Obviously, we're gonna get hit by one of these. Ground Crush. Kinda more dangerous, because if Yuki runs towards Alf, both of us will get hit. Um, not much we can do about that. These guys are completely immune to IP stuff. So one of us is gonna get it. Um... Tornado Horn inflicts confusion, so I'm just gonna place a bet and hope it works. This will... Also, I delete me all further along the IP gaze, which... I mean, otherwise he's just knocked out because of the confusion. Let's see. Here I go. Please run away. Let's see... Okay, nice. Alpha is actually a really good pattern, right? I got it. Ooh, uh, bad. I kind of doubt Alf can cancel this. Um. Yeah, sorry, I can't bet on Rockbreaker. Not when the consequence is getting seriously damaged and confused. But yeah, see, by staggering them like that, Elf gets in a spot where he can um cancel both. Be in charge of canceling both of them. But see, with better timing, we wouldn't have had to deal with. With, with better luck and not getting invincible aura. <laughs> I should have waited for Yuki to learn that before starting this fight, but I didn't think of it. Okay, that was really not too bad. GG easy. see if it's possible to beat these guys without taking damage. I mean, I'm sure it is. But let's give it a go. Uh... Kinda don't want to deal with learning Invincible Aura in the middle, though.
let's go fight something else and make sure that he actually knows it beforehand. I don't intend on using it during the fight, but just the disrupting one attack randomly is not something we can afford. Is one of these guys actually smaller? What the fuck? Uh, ha! Kiss my tail. My God. I'm looking at Yuki and Ulf. Oh my god! No, oh, what the fuck? It's randomized? Huh? What? That's really interesting. I mean, even 10 and 11 are different values, even though they don't even exist. But A is, like, specifically tiny. Point A4, 1, 1, 1, 2. Ha! Kiss my tail! Point A for again. But the others are different. Point A for Okay, no. They are just randomized. <laughs> It's not like A is always tiny. Oh, that's hilarious, though. Sorry, guys, use debug mode during battle. This is an invalid run.
instantaneous. It actually literally might be instantaneous with uh, Tech 3. Not sure about that. I'm still, uh... Huh, actually... I wonder if their character lines are different during this part of the story? I mean, I doubt it, but it's possible, right? Like, what if the party lines are specific to the party formation? So, I'll will say certain things to Yuki when it's just the two of them fighting and have a different phrasing for when he's kind of just saying it to anyone when you've got two or three party members uh, besides Ulf. I don't think you be learned invincible aura. God damn it. I guess you he only knows those special moves then. I mean, I can't remember any others, but I kinda thought he had two pages of special moves. He swung his sword at the same tempo as the song. Then right for attack. Wow, total miss. GG. Oh wow, these guys count as beasts? Okay, nice. This 
楼。You keys and hippo. I didn't even break a sweat. It's possible his base dodge rate is higher than that. I know it varies per character, but I can't remember what the values are. I kind of thought also was higher, but I can totally be wrong. You didn't see that. Damn it! If he were just a little faster. I kind of wish the aerial combos would level up as you went too. Maybe that would be hilarious, but I feel like it would be pretty cool. It would also give more incentive to just use them more and more. Clean dodge. Get in there, Yuki! Yeah, okay, he's not gonna be up. Eh, he could have dodged that. Well, I didn't mean to target them both on the one guy, but it worked out. The deal is, when you do that, you're always kind of risking that. Um, one of them will kill the enemy with their head, and then the other, whoever's second to hit, will just miss because the enemy's gone instead. So it's usually more reliable to divide and conquer.
Oh shit, didn't see that coming. Dodged both of us. Once it swayed, it was an iframe, so. Alright! We did it! Yuki still hasn't learned invincible aura. With this luck, we could have gotten through the fight. Without Invincible Aura interrupting us, of course. But it is no guarantee. Wow, nice, that was pretty close. For Malph, I mean. Alright, okay, gonna be here. LOL? It's funny, because the attack there could have screwed him over. Yeah, see? It would have connected with Yuki before Alf hit it. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> this fight was perfect anyway. Trolled. It went back towards its spawn location, which was towards us. Definitely instantaneous. Not enough to kill. Interesting. Oh, 
Oh, but no, A is the one that's using that. Oh, I was really stunned there for a while. Yuki finally learned uh, Invincible Aura. Alright! We did it! Let's take out the last couple guys here, uh, get some SP back for Elf, and then head for the boss. Okay, can we get out of this? Yes. <laughs> I didn't even break a sweat. See if we can fare a little better at the boss. I wonder if I was close enough to the backtracking path that it would have been quicker to go that way. Just shortcut things. I think we pretty much cleared Randodo of all the enemies. Maybe actually all of them. I mean, they respawn when you leave the area and come back, but still pretty cool. So Berserker is an option for this fight. And it could be a pretty good way to get a lot of damage out of Yuki or Ulf in a short span. But I don't think it's necessary to bother with it here. 
We did fine the first time, and I don't think it's necessary to beat them hitless either. And no, it turns out this cutscene can be skipped anyway. Okay, we need Yuki to catch up here, and yeah, that should be fine. Pretty concerned about this one. Yeah. If Ulf had learned PS Rock Breaker there, we'd be fine. But as is, nothing to do. Is he fast enough? Probably not. Yeah, sure, why not dodge it? I'll take it. I think I was only hit once. And if Alt had learned Rock Breaker um, at PS, he'd have been ready to take that fight. So I'll call that a good lesson. And skill level up, can't complain. Cyclone Ice Ice. Another Lem Fruit acquired.
this is definitely not the way to go. <laughs> Don't think we're leaving here by boat. Nice, these guys respawned. I kind of doubt there's specific dialogue for when Alf and Yuki fight here on their own. I mean, it's a really short period of the game. We really rode out to some two and a half hours here. Two hours-ish. But that was because we decided to explore the whole place on our own. Which was totally worthwhile. And finding the glass slippers on their own. Uh, with that, Alfina in the party is pretty funny. So, there could be some intentionalness to this. But, not likely. Still, worth investigating for sure. Anyway, that's going to do it for this part. Um, at the next part, we will be going into Dragon Valley. And I'll have all the story stuff in between done off camera. Thanks for watching. <laughs>